Hey everyone, welcome to lesson three of module three, setting up your store. This is going to be a big module. There's a lot included in, I'm sorry, a big lesson. There's a lot included in this because this is where we really start to put it all together. Everything we've been talking about up to this point, uh, your, your branding, your strategy, your store model, and, uh, your vision of everything. How, what kind of brand you want to create, what kind of market you want to sell into, what kind of niches you want to include in your store, and then what's it all going to look like. So what I want to do in this uh, this video right here is not only walk you through actually setting up a store, showing you an example store that I built last month and, and ran some sales through uh, and how that was all set up, but then also looking at some example stores that are out there as well. All right, I'm not going to reveal any like personal stores of my own in this um, for obvious reasons of how much this is going to be uh, distributed, right, the exposure of, of this course. Uh, but I will show you a, a case study store that was set up last month and we just ran a couple thousand dollars in sales through it just so I could use it uh, as an example for setting up your store here and then also again look at some live examples as well. Uh, we've already talked about branding, we've already looked at a couple example stores but I really want to pull it all together in this and show you uh, exactly how this all looks when it's built, right? So this will be one of the longer lessons up until this point because there's a lot to cover. Um, and mostly, here's what we're going to do, right? We're going to look at starting your free trial um, with with that link and then entering your store name is the first thing, right? That's why the previous lesson to this was all about choosing your store name because um, you want to have a name by now in mind. It doesn't have to be 100%, but you at least want a direction, right? Uh, and then entering your personal info, of course, that's just the basic setup. And then the rest will walk through uh, together. I'm going to show you how to set this up from your settings um, to your theme and your branding, the different pages you have to have, your navigation, uh, your domain, all these things. All right. And then we'll quick walk over the dashboard and live view and test all these different things um, that that we want to look at in setting up your store. So this is going to mostly be a live over the shoulder type training where I have a bunch of examples and things that I want to look at already set up. All right, so first thing is you go to this link, right? Um, Shopify.com backslash ecom empires. This is going to give you your link where you can start your 14 day free trial. And basically when you want to get started, uh, it's just like you see here, you're going to enter your email address. And then you'll come in here to get started. This is where you have to choose a store name, right? Uh, and so you'll, you'll choose a store name here and it'll tell you whether it's available or not. Again, it doesn't necessarily matter what you choose here because I'm going to show you how you can connect any domain to your store. So later, if you choose a name here that you don't like, you can put in any name. Okay. And when you do this, all right, when, when you click create your store, the very next page it's going to take you to, uh, has a quick bridge page before you actually get into your store where it's going to uh, ask you some basic information about yourself all right now the important thing to remember on the next page is that all of that information again can be changed but if you are looking to set up a store that sells in USD um, well, let's just hold on let me just put something in here really random like uh, testing store one two three right uh see there's so many of them that have been created for like examples right um my test store one two three four five so annoying all right my how about my testing store Okay, see, like, it, this literally does not matter because I'm just doing this to show you guys uh, what what happens, okay? For those of you who are brand new, uh, I'm not planning on actually doing anything with this trial that I create. All right, so you'll see it'll tell you a little about, it doesn't matter what you answer to these questions. You can say, I'm just playing around. Uh, you can select these if you want help, but you don't need to select any, any of these. You can say zero, I'm just getting started. And then you go to next. And this is where it's going to ask you to put your information here. Okay. Now here's, here's what I wanted to mention. It's important to note 
that this is your personal info okay so what you put in here uh, you can put in if you already have an LLC and you want to use that then you can use that information here but this is really meant for your personal info um, but it will be used as your default business address which we can change later okay so whatever you put in here can be changed later uh, you don't need to see this is optional but here's the main thing of what I wanted to mention about this is if you want your store to look like it's set up in the United States and to be able to accept payments in USD all right that's the main reason people usually want their store to look like it's US because the US is by far the biggest market you can sell into in the world and if you want to be able to accept in US currency which most people do because it would be a big conversion rate killer for you to try to sell into the US under a different currency then you need to have a US address here. If you live in Croatia and you put a, and, and you select that country here, right, and you put in a, uh, a Croatian address, for example, okay, it's, it's going to set your store up in whatever the currency is of the country that you select. And that's really difficult to change later. Uh, plus it's going to make it difficult for you to set up Shopify payments later as well. Unless starting out, you choose one of the accepted countries like the United States, Canada, or the United Kingdom. So that may be a little work that you need to set up ahead of time before going into this is having a virtual U S address that you can use to, uh, or a business address that you can use here to actually set your store. up. If you don't have one, then just use what you have. Uh, uh, and you can try to change it later with Shopify, right? That I'm, I'm just letting you know right now, that's not part of the course is uh, changing it later to your country because that's all based on Shopify on a case-by-case -case basis. So uh, if you are in one of the main countries, just use this. If you plan on selling locally into your country, then it doesn't matter. Just use whatever your country is. But if you do want to sell into the U.S. and you want your shop to accept payments in currency in USD, that can be changed later, okay? It can be changed later, but it's going to be more difficult than just using a U.S. address here from the very beginning, okay? Uh, and so when you do this, right, the next thing will be enter your store and your 14 day trial will be started. And then basically you go to select a plan uh, because your store will be on pause until you choose a plan. So um, let's walk into this store example right here. All right. So uh, this is a store that you can see that I set up. Uh, it's paused right now, which you'll see right here because we're not actually running anything with it. Um, so I set this up uh, and basically I'll just show you here. We can we can view the dashboard uh, basically just in the month of July. Uh, so last month you can see it's set to the month of July um, 2018 as I record this. Um, not anything like really crazy here. Just $2,300 in sales just to prove the store, just to prove what was going on. 1% um, 1, 1 conversion rate, $35 average order value. We can look at some of the products that were sold as well. Um, we were selling around the world. We had mostly United States, UK, you know, the top countries. Um, so anyway, we'll look at some of this stuff more. I just want you to see that uh, we were running this store in July. Uh, and when I say where, I mean myself and I had my VAs on it, uh, my team. All right. And so you see, um, we, we peaked here at a $400 a day on July 16th and then kind of tapered off. And I started focusing on getting ready the education that I wanted to put together in this course. Um, and just wanted to show this to, to basically show you guys that you can set up a store and have, you know, multiple hundred dollar days coming in, um, pretty quickly. Right. Uh, and so I, I, again, this is just meant as like a small level case study because a lot of the courses that are out there, they don't even ever actually go through showing you any live demos right uh, and so of course I'm, I'm not going to reveal any of my own stores or anything like that but I wanted to just give you guys uh, something that we could look at with like some data and an example um, to show you that the setup I'm using does actually work and would have continued to work if we would have left this store running and continued to put money and traffic into it all right so uh, anyway, here we go. So let's get into this because when you first get in, it's it's not going to look like this. Now you're going to have something here that says select a plan. Okay. And I'll go over the plans first because when you select a plan, you can get started. All right. Uh, and select a plan and uh, it won't actually charge you anything until your trial is over. But the deal is that you can't actually start uh, running a live store until you accept the plan. Okay. 
So this is the basic Shopify plan here. It's $29 a month. This is where I suggest you start. Um, the only reason really moving up to the $79 plan is not really for the features. You honestly don't. I mean, yes, the one feature that is good here is you get professional reports, um, which are more in depth than what you get here. Uh, you get a lower transaction fee and you get up to five staff accounts. So um, this is better when you are growing and you need more staff accounts and you really are selling multiple products and you want to get those professional reports. And of course, the 1% transaction fee definitely matters when you start doing more volume, right? Um, you know, if, if you start to get to, uh, uh, let's just say you do a $30,000 a month, 1% versus 2% is a couple hundred dollars. So it's more than worth it for paying an extra 50 to save a couple hundred dollars, right? Um, so anyway, so that's what it looks like on your plan. All right. Uh, and you will, there's really no need to bump up to here until you're really scaling and you basically, you want to save an additional percent on the transaction fee or you want to start adding more staff accounts. Um, so anyway, uh, be, so let's, so let's look at this, right? First thing that you will want to do, uh, that I'll walk you through as I would do this is to go into your settings. Okay. So in your settings, this is where you'll see that um, you can come into your general settings here. Um, this is where your actual address will be. Uh, and then this is where you can set up your store name, your account email, and your customer email. So you want them to be different, right? You want your store name, your account email to be yours, personal, how you want to be contacted by Shopify. Uh, and then your customer email. So this is one of the reasons I say no matter what your root domain is up here, you can see originally we started with a name. Um, I started with the name Trendy Wishlist. Uh, and so I changed it to Imports Empire because I liked that name better. Um, and so when I go to my store, it will actually be called Imports Empire, right? I put that domain over the top of it. I changed the name of the store. And so even though the root domain is Trendy Wishlist, that's what I mean by you can change it by changing your store name here uh, and adding a different domain name in right here, right? You can change that and connect any domain you want. And that's what's going to show up right here. Um, because when you go into domains, you'll see that you can you have the option to change your primary domain and then send all traffic, right? Enable redirection. So um, you you wanna you can change it and enable all primary redirection to uh, that main domain that you're using. Okay. So back to settings. Um, that's basically all you need in the general settings, right? You'll have and this is where your store currency is set uh, to change the formatting. You're gonna have to change the address. Uh, and this will all be set based on whatever you want to use, right? I just usually use the prefix here of whatever the initials of the store name are. All right. Next thing that you'll go through, taxes. I don't charge taxes on my store. Taxes is kind of a gray area. You can consult with a legal professional if you want to. I'm not giving you tax advice. I want to make that disclaimer clear. But uh, I will tell you personally that I don't charge taxes on my store. I just, I just uh, make that up on my own when I file taxes for my business. Um, account, you don't really need to worry about here. This is managing account and permissions. When you want to add staff accounts, this is where you go to add a staff account. Uh, that's self-explanatory. I'm not going to cover that. Um, so then moving on to payment providers. All right. This is where you connect how you get payments. It's one of the first things that you'll want to set up. So you can set up a Stripe account. Of course, if you're using from the Australia, UK, or, or I'm sorry, not even Australia yet. Um, Shopify is constantly rolling out to new countries for Stripe payments. Um, right now, I believe that their Stripe payments are set up in uh, definitely the US, the UK, and Canada. Uh, they also, I believe, have started to push it out into some other areas as well. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, I, I'm Australia, I think is is getting it and i think also uh, i think also japan singapore uh, there's a few places that shopify they're constantly trying to expand where their payments are accepted so you can uh, and basically the way this works is stripe is automatically integrated 
uh, or Shopify payments is Stripe and it's automatically integrated. Now, if Shopify payments doesn't work for you, you can always try to set up your own Stripe account like I did here. You can see it doesn't say Shopify payments. So I set up my own Stripe account um, with Stripe. Again, I, that, I'm not going to walk you through that because it's just a matter of going to Stripe and going through the process. Uh, PayPal, you should set up your own PayPal account. Uh, I will give you warnings and say PayPal has been known to cause issues, but I like to use them as a checkout option because people trust PayPal. It's something that's accepted around the world and people know it around the world, even though it can have some issues. Uh, again, you know, but I, I still recommend using it and I recommend setting up a business account with PayPal because it's free. So set up a business account, not a personal one. Um, get all your information correct in PayPal for your business profile. And these are the two main payments that I'm accepting, Stripe and PayPal. They do have other options here where you can select alternative uh, payment methods to use. Um, these are different things like Alipay and uh, BitPay and so you can do that. You can use Amazon Pay and you can also um, activate your own custom payment method. So if you go through here, uh, this is where you can select cash on delivery if you want um, and this is where you can set up your own custom payment method. There's a lot of different options uh, in here. Okay, so that's all for payment providers because Shopify can help you with that or your uh, whatever solution that you're using. But Stripe is the main one that's out there uh, that people use. Stripe Atlas is a worldwide accepted program that a lot of people use if you're not from one of the top tier countries. Notifications. Uh, you don't even really have to worry about notifications except that you might want to come in here and change the order confirmation. Um, because the order confirmation automatically goes out and at the very bottom of this you don't want to change any of that uh, HTML text but at the very bottom there's something that has to do with uh, where is it maybe it's not at the bottom or maybe I already changed it uh, will notify I didn't change it will notify you when it has been sent now if you're going to set up something like after ship and send out notifications with tracking then you can use this uh, but if you don't want if you don't want uh, if you just want to ship out orders without people wondering if they're going to get a confirmation you can delete this line now you may wonder why would I do that well basically it all has to do with drop shipping uh, if you're not you know if you send an order out with drop shipping it's two to three week delivery right so if you're sending out something that says they'll get an email when it's been shipped then you might create a headache with yourself where people get that email and uh, what well, people never get an email I mean uh, if you're not using something and like after ship so if people get that email their order confirmation and they're expecting an email then you're going to start getting uh, more and more like people looking for order updates but we're going to talk about after ship so don't worry uh, billing obviously that's where you go to get your bills you don't need to worry about that checkout is somewhere that uh, you will want to look I'll just go through this briefly uh, I like to use, I mean, this is fine. They can check out with phone number or email, or whatever. First and last name, uh, most of this is pretty standard. Definitely have both of these checked that uh, shipping address by default, enable auto completion for the address, uh, don't automatically fulfill orders. This is for additional scripts. You don't need to worry about that right now. Um, Show a sign on sign up option that whatever yeah that's that's what they get. Um, I wouldn't pre-select it just because it used to be I would say pre-select it, but now with recent data privacy uh, nonsense happening all over the world, I would leave it unselected. Uh, and then here's where you can generate a sample refund policy, privacy policy, and terms of service. And remember that because we're going to use this. Uh, when we come back later. So here's what I usually do. I'll, I'll keep the checkout page open because we're going to use these automatic um, policy generators to create pages on our store later so that we have a page for each one of these. Okay, so I'll usually leave this open and then I'll just open uh, a new tab with my stuff. Okay. Uh, files, you don't need to worry about. 
shipping okay this is the other big one and and where you're going to need to think about right now is if you want to charge shipping on your store or if you want to offer free shipping there's no yes or no answer or i'm sorry right or wrong answer and you guys have been able to see my address there but uh anyway there's no right or wrong answer to this okay uh you can so here's what we did on this store all right um domestic shipping started at 495 and then if they order something that's $30 and up, it's free. All right. So there's two ways that you can set up shipping. You can set it up by weight. You Well, there's actually multiple ways. But the two main ways I use are you can set it up by weight. You can set it up by multiple. I'm sorry, by price. All right. So for this store, free shipping is only if they spend $29.95 and up. And it'll show them free shipping. All right. International shipping was $8.95 standard on everything by price. Uh, and then domestic shipping starts at four ninety five and goes to ten dollars um, based on uh, based on how many items they ordered. So now let, let me go through this and break this down for you, okay? So the way that we're doing shipping here is you can see it's by weight. But I want to make something really clear. I'm not actually doing this as a way where I'm really weighing the items that I'm selling. All right. This is a system that's used simply because I wanted to charge shipping on my store for basic orders. All right. It's, it's a strategy. You can either give free shipping and raise your prices a little bit because no matter what, what it, what matters at the end of the day is that we know how much an item costs us. Okay. So for example, I'm not going to get too much in the item pricing on this, but it does go into the strategy a little bit about pricing items. All right, so if we know an item cost us, say, $5, an item cost us $5 to fulfill on AliExpress, that's cost of item and cost of e-package shipping, whatever it is, it comes out to $5, uh, just as an example. And we know the perceived value of that item that people are going to buy it at is, say, $19.95, all right? Anything over $19.95 just doesn't make sense for this item. People aren't going to pay that much, okay? Uh, there's two strategies of what we could do here, right? You could charge $19.95 with free shipping for the product, or you could make the product seem like it's cheaper uh, say, say charge $16.95 for the product, but also have $4.95 shipping. The shipping is pure profit because we already are factoring in our overall cost. So somebody might be more likely to, uh, more likely to go through the checkout process on a lower priced item at $16.95 because it seems cheaper and pay the $4.95 shipping on the item, which in the long run actually makes us more money in profit than charging uh, $19.95 plus free shipping. There's no right or wrong answer. I've had stores that do both and they can both be successful. Now, the thing you have to remember is if you're doing print on demand, you are actually going to have a shipping cost and there's not too much room of how much you can fluctuate the price, right? Like a shirt for print on demand might cost you $10 to fulfill plus $4 in shipping. So that's $14. You can't really charge more than $22, $23 for a t-shirt. So you might only want to charge $21.95 for the shirt plus $4.95 shipping because then you're able to get $26 out of the sale as opposed to only $22 out of the sale, which is going to leave your profit margins much, much slimmer. Okay. So this is really a game of profit margin and what we're doing. All right. Because you have to consider, is there really a shipping cost? And if there is, then of course you need that covered. If there's not, then what, you know, what is your overall strategy on pricing your item? Do you want to make the items look cheaper and price and price the shipping in as extra profit or do you want to just give free shipping uh, and hope for higher conversions all right so uh, looking at this then how how is this really set up all right so if we look at our products okay and if I come in here and I just take an example product Coming down here, you can see uh, when I come here, those are the variants. You can see what I mean, right? Uh, taxes should be unchecked. So anyway, so you can see how you are able to set the pricing on your product. Okay, so this product is fourteen ninety five. 
Uh, here's where you can put a compare at price that you want to, which is like the retail value, right? This is the sale price. This is the retail price. Uh, and then down here is where you can set the weight for shipping. All right. So here's basically what happens is you are just going to make every item weigh a pound. All right. If you want to follow this shipping method, every item weighs a pound, right? Regardless of what it really weighs, it doesn't matter. This is just for your own internal tracking to create a shipping system on your store. So you make every item weigh a pound. And what that means is here, right? Uh, that item will fall in the 0.1 to 1.9 pound category, so it'll automatically add 495 shipping to the item when they go to check out. If they buy two items, then it'll fall into this category. It'll automatically add 595 shipping. Three items, four items, five items, six items, okay? And by the time they get the six items, they're probably spending more than 29.95 anyway, which means this, uh, this will trump this by price and they'll get free shipping all right so that's the idea of this shipping policy for this store right here uh, it's an example of what you could do um, where they're every item just weighs a pound okay and so you're able to sh set up a shipping policy on your store and this would work no matter what if I print on demand items I'd automatically set the weight to a pound uh, and then it'll automatically charge the 495 shipping on that item Okay, uh, this is an item with variance. All right, so variance means it has more than one option. So there's a red and green option for this. So you make sure that it's like that on both of them, both variance weigh a pound, and then you're good. All right, if we go back to all products, we'll look at one more example for an item that doesn't have variance. Uh, let's say this 360 rotating electric mop. Okay, so, oh, this does have multiple ones. Let's go back. Anti-wrinkle serum. All right, one option. Uh, charge taxes will automatically be checked by default, so sometimes you have to, it seems that was missed on a lot of items in here. Uh, not that it matters, because I'm not running this store anyway, but back to the weight. So you can see when we set up this product with a single item, no variance, that it just right on that main page, you come down here, you set the weight to one. If you have multiple variants, then it just becomes a process like the one I showed you where each variant, you have to actually set the weight to one for each one of those. Um, so anyway, so that's how we do this. So every item is automatically by manual uh, manual submission is made to weigh a pound. If I made this weigh two pounds, then it would automatically be in this bracket, right? And if somebody bought two of them, then it would automatically be in this bracket, okay? So that that's, you see how it's a manual control of how you can set the shipping for your items, all right? So uh, now let's, okay, so let's actually open this up. So not add shipping zone, um, edit. Let's edit the shipping zone, okay? This is for domestic, all right? So you create a zone name based on, uh, usually it's based on domestic, like whatever your country is, and international, the rest of the world. That's usually the best way to do it. Uh, so domestic uh, is United States, and regardless of where you live, if you're setting up a store to look like the U.S., then U.S. would be domestic for you, okay? And then you can see how we did it here. Price-based rate. Uh, free secured shipping, twenty nine ninety five and up. Uh, so, and then the rate is free. And then weight based rates. All right. And so, it's easy to add a rate. You can name it whatever you want. I usually name it like some standard secured shipping. Use that word secured so they know it has tracking. It's secured. It's protected. All right. And you can set whatever weight you want. But when we're doing it like what I did before, um, I'm bracking it out every pound okay so i only go to 1.9 so that any one item falls into this category and then you can set the rate amount down here okay and then for the next one two to 2.9 three to three point nine and so on and so forth and so uh the rates go by pound um but really it's by item so if they order one item here two here three here four here five here six here and then uh, uh for the the price based rate uh, is the same. So free secured shipping, minimum price, no maximum price, free shipping rate. Okay. Uh, you could do that if you wanted to add a rate and just do free shipping for your entire store. Uh, free for the US, free secured shipping, minimum order price zero, free shipping rate. So that's what it would be. So no matter what they get on your store, 
uh, as long as they add some type of item to your cart, they're getting free secured shipping. This is how you would set up free shipping for your entire store, okay? Uh, so, the, and I'm not going to cover calculated rates, but if you actually wanted to set up with a real shipping carrier, um, and let them choose different rates based on the real rates of like USPS or UPS or whatever, then you would do that here. Okay, so that's domestic. Now, what I do for international shipping, uh, international shipping here as a zone is number one, I specifically select what countries I want to include, okay? So when you show all countries, it'll show you all the countries of the world, all right? And you can select basically which countries you want included and which you don't, um, where it'll have this big drop-down menu, right? You can just include the rest of the world if you want to. If you check this, it'll include all of Asia. Uh, as you can see, I specifically go through and only select the countries I believe that I'm going to be marketing to. And the reason I do that is because a lot of these other countries that I'm not going to be marketing to, I don't want the headache of somebody, you know, if you're running a big campaign and it goes viral, just because you're not actually marketing to, say, uh, Yemen or Vietnam, somebody might see it anyway just because of organic reach, people sharing it, friends commenting on it. They might see uh, that post. And so somebody randomly from Vietnam could come to my store and make a purchase. But since I don't have Vietnam selected as a country in my international shipping zone, they won't actually be able to check out because they won't be able to use a Vietnamese address to go through the checkout process because that's not a shipping option for my store. So it's just a way that uh, I like to go through and select only the countries that I actually want to sell into. That way, countries that aren't involved, uh, we already went through the whole worldwide shipping thing and my pluses and minuses for selling the different parts of the world. Um, and so that that's my theory behind all of that. And then I just do a basic price-based rate for international shipping, okay? Secured international shipping, uh, price range zero and up. So no matter what they buy, it doesn't matter. It's always going to be a flat rate of $8.95. Uh, some some countries will be less, some countries will be more, but $8.95 should, should about cover it. Uh, and the reason I don't do the weight-based rate and start at $4.95 is just because I know it, it would get too expensive because I can't start at $4.95 because shipping to some countries may cost $4.95. So I need to start higher. So I just do a flat rate for all the international countries, okay? Now, you need to be careful as well with print-on-demand with some of those um, because print-on-demand companies, if they're shipping international, will charge uh, different shipping rates that could go up to $10 or more based on whatever the item is that you're selling. So uh, anyway, that that's everything really for shipping, all right, and getting your shipping set up on your store. All you need to decide is if you want to do free shipping or actually charge shipping, um, which I would make that decision based on number one, if you have print on demand on your store, then I would charge shipping. Uh, charging shipping works anyway. So if you want to be able to show like lower prices by a couple dollars and then make it up on the shipping, um, for sure, you can do that. If you want to know what is generally considered to get the highest conversion rates store wide, then free shipping. Uh, is, is generally what's considered to have a higher conversion rate is free shipping. But um, you might make a little bit less, but hopefully you'll convert a little bit more. Okay, so that, that's the whole shipping deal. And then that's everything really. Sales channels, I'll go over quickly. You don't, we're not going to focus on this right now. Um, different sales channels is, is more an e-com ascension program. Um, but they do have multiple sales channels in here that you can automatically link in like Amazon, um, like Messenger, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram. Okay, and, and what these allow you to do basically, like BuzzFeed, Winello, this allows your products to be on their marketplace and you give them a commission percentage. Messenger allows you to sell your products right through Messenger. Amazon obviously lets you sync your listings to Amazon, but it's a big, there's a lot of red tape that goes through that. Um, Kick is a messenger platform just like this that allows you. Facebook allows you to set up a, a products, your products on your Facebook page. 
um, Pinterest buyable pins. So eBay, Instagram, there's different things that you can use, um, but I just want to make you aware of them. We're not going to cover them in this training because they're their own whole different thing. And the, the focus of this training is to show you how to get set up and start using Facebook ads to, to make sales. All right, so that's everything in the settings, okay? Uh, we walked through all the basic settings, and this is where I start with my store first, okay? This is, we're, we're getting your store set up. Now, the next part uh, is going to be setting up your online store, right? This is all everything else, your theme, uh, your pages, your navigation, domain, preferences, all of that stuff. All right, preferences is where you're going to take your store out of uh, basically out of development mode when you're ready. Um, the load speed, okay, really long. All right, so when you automatically get started, your store will be enabled with a password. So you just uncheck this right here um, when you're ready to make your store live. Basically what that means is when you go to the home page of your store, it'll just be a big password protected page until you, uh, until you select a plan. And once you select a plan, then you can take off the password. Uh, Google Analytics and Facebook Pixel will cover in a separate section. Uh, this is your preferences is also where you set your homepage title. Okay, whatever you want your store to be called. Uh, and then where you can put in a quick description about what you're selling basically. So like for this one, just said shop our best items from skincare, outdoor and fitness, kitchen and dining, beauty and cosmetics, gadgets, tools and home improvement, car accessories and more. You'll love the deals we have on amazing items. Basically, this is a general type of store where you can see the different categories we had for uh, everything that we were selling. All right. So I wanted to show you an example of like a general store um, that kind of sells across multiple different categories. All right. So let's now... Uh, before we get into themes, because that's really one of the biggest sections, okay, uh, let's talk about your domain. I already talked about your domain, but your domain here is where you'll connect your domain, which is usually, you know, you can buy your domain wherever you want to, all right? I use ipage.com to buy my domains. You can use GoDaddy. You can use whatever you want. You can even buy the domain right through Shopify. But when you go to connect an existing domain, Shopify will actually give you instructions, okay? So you can learn about connecting your domains. If I were to put a domain in here and click next, it'll give you instructions for connecting your domain, all right? So since there's already good instructions that exist on that and it's easy, uh, I'm not gonna cover that, but this is where you would connect any domain you want that you already bought through a third-party provider like GoDaddy or iPage, uh, or you can buy a domain right through Shopify if you want to as well. But I always get my domain through my own my own hosting provider. All right. All right, pages. Let's cover this briefly before we go into the theme. When you have your pages, all right, this is kind of some basic ideas of what you want to cover in your pages. When you're building a brand, when you're building a store, you want your store to be as legit as possible, right? So when they look at, now there's two different things that you can use uh, basically to kind of create your store uh, navigation. You could put your main pages up here in the main menu, or you could do what we did on this store, put your categories of things you sell in the main menu and have your pages all down at the bottom, quick links, get in touch, uh, newsletter, sign up, right? And so at the bottom, we have all the pages. And so you want to have multiple pages on your store because this gives confidence to people. Uh, not only does having a legitimate support email set up on your actual domain, which is why I do it the way I do it, like I page, you get free email uh, with every domain that you buy, right? So I set up a, a support email address with every domain and then I just redirect the support email address to whatever my host, or I'm sorry, whatever my help desk provider is, which I use Help Scout. All right. So that's really easy. Again, not something I'm going to cover here, um, because you can, it's really easy. All you have to do is go into your hosting provider and ask them how you forward your email address to a third party, uh, customer 
email desk, like Help Scout or Zoho or whatever. And so I have mine set up to go to Help Scout. Uh, and then a phone number, just a basic phone number. Like I already talked about both of these things, you can get a phone number through calltour.com net calltour.com and they have a five dollar plan you have to do a little searching for the five dollar plan but um, basically they have a five dollar plan to set up a phone number and then you see all these links that give people confidence right we have an faq and about a contact page refund policy delivery policy secure checkout why buy from us terms of service privacy policy and gdpr compliance right so like there's a lot of stuff here to help people uh, have confidence that our store is legit, it's been set up and, and they're covered and, and they can be confident in shopping from here. All right, and this is where you create your pages basically. It's a really simple format uh, to create a page, right? You just click add page here and then you'll get this basic layout page. Um, which is where you can come in, name the page, and then create like your basic about us uh, and preview the page as well when it's done, okay? So it doesn't need to be anything complicated. Um, this is just, you know, our about else. So the idea for Imports Empire, right, is a play on the drop shipping because this is a drop shipping store. Uh, and so it was a play on that of being able to, you know, like uh, just like imports empire you get it it it's doesn't require any any real thought uh so we're not hiding the fact that we import products for people uh we aim to offer customers a variety of the latest trending products from all around the world um we offer all of this while providing high uh, excellent customer service and friendly support run by family and friends uh we always keep an eye on the latest internet trends and put our customers wishes first uh, that's why we have satisfied customers all over the world. The interest uh, top priority. So basically, we just make it all about the customer and talk a little bit about the type of things that we try to sell on our store. Your About Us is an important page because people are going to go there and look at it, but it doesn't need to be overly complicated, right? It just needs to fit a story to the business, okay? Which is what we did here. A basic story about Imports Empire. We're a store that finds trending products from all around the world. We're a family-run business focused on customer service and friendly support and making sure we find you the best things okay uh make make this an enjoyable shopping experience for you all right and that's our about us page contact us is really simple okay um the contact us page there's a contact template uh see there's a page dot contact template that you can use um, put in a simple picture and just have some simple text about how they can contact you, right? And then it'll have the contact form right here. And then this email address is linked to your help desk. So any contact form that goes in will automatically go to your help desk. All right. Delivery policy. This is based on a drop shipping delivery policy where uh, basically we talk about Talk about we ship worldwide uh, and just give them a basic rundown of the drop shipping model. Uh, we have distribution channels with manufacturers all over the world. So your order gets processed at the manufacturer and shipped within a few days. This direct supply chain allows for us to cut 60% of the cost and bring amazing prices. Uh, so you see, we're actually explaining the process, making it out to be a benefit to them, and then giving normal delivery times on most items, all right? So we're definitely keeping it 100% with the customer and making an actual page where they can see the delivery policy and, more importantly, where we can protect ourselves as a store if there's a complaint later on or if there's a chargeback later on or if there's some type of problem, all right? It's all uh, explained in the delivery policy. And again, this is what the page looks like when somebody goes to it, right? Uh, okay, so FAQ page, all right? Um, pretty self-explanatory. When you go to an FAQ page, you're going to see most stores, uh, you know, you're going to see most stores have some type of FAQ page, right? Okay. So most places will have one and you can get an idea of what kind of customers you want or I'm sorry, what kind of questions you want to include on here. Like they have just a few questions uh, for the one that we built. 
I go through and have uh, global merchants and artisans. Uh, we cover the shipping time right away, 100% satisfaction guarantee. Uh, it's, oh, that got cut off somehow. It's on the way. Uh, basic refund policy for different types of items, retail, shirts, free plus shipping items. Um, uh, our business address that they can send it back to, even though I don't accept returns, it's still good to have a, a virtual address. Uh, then what if I received the wrong shirt? How much is shipping international? So you can check this all out on your own time. Um, uh, but basically a, a basic FAQs page, right? Is important to have. Where are we at here? Um, privacy policy, GDPR compliance, refund policy, and terms of service. All three of these pages, if you remember, all three of these pages are from here. So when I did this, generate sample refund policy, change your address and email to what it should be in here, all right, because it might pull your email from like your personal. And so you want to see, like you want to make sure your email addresses are updated. Okay. Um, but anyway, what you're going to do is just basically cop once you've once you've made sure it's updated, you're basically just going to copy the whole thing and then you're going to go to add a page here. Right. And then you're going to paste it and just call it your privacy policy. All right. So that's good because what Shopify will automatically do with these pages, you might be thinking, why do I have to create them twice? These pages will show up at the very bottom of your checkout. OK, so when somebody actually goes through to your checkout process, so let's come here. Okay, let's click the get it now button and let's go to checkout. Oh, checkout's disabled. That's right, because the store's paused. Anyway, when they were to actually go to the checkout page, they would see at the very bottom privacy policy, terms of service, refund policy. All right, so Shopify includes these pages on your on your checkout page, but they don't actually include it on your store. So one thing you want to do to have these here, uh, refund, terms of service, privacy policy, is actually create the pages in here. And that's what you can see I did, uh, is here's, here's the refund and return policy. All right. And you'll put in the actual amount of days you want your policy to last. Uh, the privacy and GDPR compliance. Okay. So it just said, it just says, uh, I forgot to update all of these from when we changed the name. All right. So it just says privacy policy within here. Um, but what I did just to make sure it's good is called it privacy policy. And G when I, when I took this and actually put it on the store, called it privacy policy and GDPR compliance. Because remember, I gave you those links. Um, so those links that will help uh, make sure you are, you can just type it in. It's real, it's real simple. Like if you type in Shopify GDPR compliance. So they have a document and they have a way that you can actually, uh, you know, set this all up right on, right on your store for you. Okay. So they cover all of this stuff and give you the things that you need to include. And then all you need to do is make sure you include it somewhere in here. All right. Uh, and, or just, you know, just, just look it up because like I said, they have, they have, this isn't necessarily even the right one. Um, Here it is, privacy policy generator. So you you can come in here and get your policies created uh, to include requirements of GD, GDPR, okay? And and then just copy that stuff uh, either over, you know, right in here, basically when it creates that policy for you, copy the whole thing in here, and then you can add this at the end and say GDPR com compliance. I spelled that wrong, huh? Uh, so, and you, you can also see little mistakes don't matter because a lot of people don't even check this. You're just protecting yourself with all these pages and you're putting these pages on there for the people who do want to see them. 
All right. So you'll, you'll put that on there and that's how you get your privacy policy return policy in terms of service. You get them right from this page and just by updating them with the information that's needed. All right. So the last pages that we didn't cover are pages you don't necessarily need to include, but again, they're just extras. Why buy from us secure checkout? These are just really simple pages that anybody could do, uh, where we have a, uh, on this page, why buy from us a buy with confidence program, all right, that we include. So again, it's just something extra to include for people that are like on the fence. They can see that page if they want to. And then secure checkout. We actually just created a page that talks about the secure checkout encryption that Shopify uses, that it never stores credit card information on file, uh, SSL certificate, basically just giving them an education on what this means. Cause if your store's on Shopify, then it is secure. Um, and it, it does use SSL encryption. And so 256 bit, this is all true to every Shopify store. It just gives you a way that you can add a little bit more confidence overall to your store by including these pages and then putting them in the navigation. So now the next thing, when you get into the navigation itself, right, now you've created all the pages. The reason we didn't get into the theme yet is because the theme is just the look of everything. You still need to create, you, you need to make the settings first, get everything set up, and then create the guts of your store. Like what are your pages going to be um, and what is your navigation going to be in your domain, right? Get all this stuff set up first and then all you have to worry about is making your store look good uh, with the theme and then you start focusing on adding products and that kind of stuff all right so navigation is where you're going to create your menus all right you'll basically have a main menu and a footer menu now like what i said for what we did with this store is we had a main menu that included the categories of the store depending on the type of store that you make uh you could have two op three options here really you could have a main menu that has all the categories if you just have like a store that has a lot of categories like maybe that's what you want to do with your main menu is just include all those categories uh, in in the main menu for people. Uh, like I want to show here, I think that's what they did as well, but it's taken forever for these websites to load right now. Oh, that's why. I don't I don't think that's a good idea. I see why they're doing that. Like they're using a map as like a way to, anyway, uh, it took forever to load. So you can see they included uh, a lot in their, they have a mega menu, right? So they have a shop link and then that goes to all their categories. If, and even those categories can break down into more categories, like a mega menu type thing. And then they have everything else in here as well. This is a good page to include. If you do have happy customers and reviews, uh, that could be a great idea. So you can see they have a lot of similar pages. Um, and so that gives them, uh, that's what their main menu looks like. Okay. Uh, their main menu over here is their, is their items as well. Okay. So they do all their main categories and items right in the main menu. And then in their footer menu is where they're going to have all their other stuff as well. All right. So you can, you can pick what type now this is a custom theme by the way that they're including all this in their custom theme uh, but anyway you can pick whatever kind of choice that you want um, but it's it's really based on uh it's based on you right it's based on the type of store what kind of categories you want to include um, but i i do like this setup so you could either do just all shopping categories in the main menu you could do all of your just regular links in the main menu or you could do a mix of both shopping categories plus you know that's just all preference on you there's no one way that works better okay uh and so main menu you'll when you edit your main menu all right it's just a matter of like if you want to add an item you name it here and then here shopify gives you a choice of how you want to do this you can choose a collection you can choose a product you can choose a page policies whatever you want to put and then name it and it'll link it right to it okay so pretty simple that's how you do the main menu uh and footer menu is the same exact thing again it's just the footer menu there's not really an option now some themes will let you create more than one footer menu which can be good because you can have like uh, a footer menu like for example, that not them. Let me see. 
Yeah, they have two, right? They have uh, quick links here that have to do with like customers, orders, and this kind of thing. Track your order is a, a link you should have. Um, I think that's not actually on here, huh? Track your order because we have shipping policy. Well, anyway, yeah, we have delivery policy. So we did it a little different. But uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Uh, they have a second footer menu as well that says search FAQ shipping returns contact us which is like customer service stuff so you can have more than one uh, it's just all kind of based on what you want to do all right in your footer but no matter what your footer should include all your links so if you want to split it up into two categories that's cool this is going to kind of be based on what theme you use because your theme is going to choose your footer layout for you uh, but you, so you can do it either way if you want to have everything in one menu or two menus, but all your links should be in your footer for sure. Every link that you have on your store, um, for the pages that you have should all be in the footer. It's just a matter of one or two. All right. Uh, and so that's, um, that's everything for your pages. Okay. Uh, and then next after, I'm sorry, your pages and your navigation, all right? And so that's everything for your navigation. Now, oh, one thing else I'll show you. When, when you're doing this, you can create sub-items, okay? So if I wanted to create a sub-item of uh, beauty and cosmetics, for example, like say I wanted to have one section that's just facial care, okay? Now, I don't have a collection for this, but... Uh, you would have to have a collection for just facial care and then I could select it. Uh, let's just say in this example, skin care is a subcategory of beauty and cosmetics. Okay. So what I could do then is come here and that's how you add it as a subcategory. All right. And so if I do that, um, what that will change on my store is you can see now there's a drop down arrow so if I hover over this then the skincare drop down comes up all right so that's how you do that in your menu to create multiple sub options underneath uh, any any given category okay and so that's everything for the basics really of uh, setting up the guts of your store, all right? The next thing that's going to come in this is uh, we're not adding any products yet because you, you want to get your theme set first and then uh, start adding products. And it, it's kind of a, a two-part process because um, you'll want to create like a test product probably so you can test your theme product page. Um, but anyway, I, th I think what we're going to do is uh, cut this video here, all right, because this has already been an hour long on just getting the guts of your store set up, the basics of your settings uh, and your pages, your navigation, your domain, your preferences, everything really other than the appearance of your store. And that's a big topic in and of itself. So uh, I'm going to go back actually and edit the, the slide title for this being part one, and then we'll have a part two as well that'll just be talking about your theme, your theme options, and just kind of walking you through how to design a store uh, and basically, you know, what what it looks like going through and, and getting everything designed and some key points that you want to focus on uh, and, and different things like that. So I'm going to cut this video here and I will see you in the next one where we're going to pick right up basically with the same exact tabs open and I'm going to keep going through it. All right. See you in the next video. Uh, really quickly, though, I guess if you are going through this with me, then you should get everything done up until this point. That makes the most sense to me. Um, get your pages created. Get your navigation set. Uh, you may not know yet what categories you want to go into, but at this point, like you can see why you have to have that stuff figured out. You have to have a direction at this point. You have to know really what niche you want to sell into or what market and then what niches are going to be in there. You can see with this store, it was like a big market uh, general type store, general niche type store really because it's still mostly the same demographic. We're selling like home improvement, life goods. Um, but we split it up into a few different large niche categories that we turned into um, like our, our main categories on our store, which are then also going to be collections, which I'll show you when we get to the product section talking about collections and how you sort that stuff in the categories. So 
uh, you can see why you want to have that started now um, before we really go any further because you need to know what categories you need to know what your overall store is going to be and what the you know what you're going to sell and what market you want to be in all right so again uh, figure that all out get caught up to this point and then I will see you in the next video the next lesson uh, where we look at breaking down the theme and how you start to make your store look like something uh, alive that's going to sell to people. All right. See you in the next video.